Today, Precarious plays Metroid Prime. Have I ever told you about my favorite superpower? Um, yes. I didn't. I didn't want to lie. It's more interesting <laughs> if you tell everybody. <laughs> Though, because I bet many people have not heard about your favorite I just, superpower. I just suddenly got caught up like I was being dishonest. <laughs> I just I gave like, you like the scorned improviser's scowl. I looked over at you like. <gasps> have I ever why? told you this story? I'm like, yes. I you did. Why did you ask me that? <laughs> I, just, I could have just been like, whoa, did you see the fire on Main Street? I'll be like, and, yep. And no, no, what you just did. God, you did it again. <laughs> It'd be like if I were to say, did you see the fire on Main Street? And then you were like, no, but I saw this other shit I wanted to talk about in this sketch. <laughs> I saw this, this duck. <laughs> This duck wearing a t wearing a top hat. I think favorite superpower is probably one of my favorite discussions. Oh boy, hold on. What's my favorite superpower? <laughs> now you tell me because I've forgotten. Uh, you're lo <sighs> dishonest. Gravity manipulation. Yes. I like the idea of gravity manipulation just because I think if you could do it at a. Uh, at a high enough of a level, yeah. There are many other superpowers that you could emulate. Right, because gravity is one of the major forces of physics, so you could really screw with stuff on right. Although, potentially a molecular no, level. No, you know what? I should be more honest. I often say gravity just because I don't want to bank on the person that I'm talking to having played the specific series. Uh-huh. If I wanted to if I were to be a superhero, the power set that I would want, it would be one of the um ooh, one of the adepts from Mass from the Mass Effect series. Oh yeah. I think the only thing that I'm unsure about is what type of adept. Mm hmm. Just because pure adept, like just straight space wizard. Yeah. Is pretty cool. And if you got to hang out with Liara or use Liara as your template and you got like singularity mm -hmm. or some of her specific powers or. I think, what was Jack's unique power? Was hers the? I don't remember. Shoot, hold on. I'm trying to remember everyone's unique power. Was I'm, it a in, shield? Like in Mass Effect Two. No, she she and some of the other adepts could do that in like the final cutscene type mm -hmm. situation of the game. Um, what I'm thinking of is the power that you could get. From each of them by like being their best friend. Oh. I'm pretty sure that I don't know if Liara actually like passed on her power in Mass Effect 2 because she was like a temporary party member. Mm-hmm. And I think I I remember that um What was her I can't even remember her name. Samara? Yeah. Samara's daughter. Oh, gave you a scary power. Oh, I, I mm. Did you ever get her? What? Like, did you ever do that? The, no. The, the evil path? No, the she was scary. I yeah. didn't, I mean like, you don't fuck with her, but still. Well, I got her power, her and her power at least once. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what her mom's superpower was. Um, well, it is, whatever. And I think that Jax might have been warp ammo. Yeah. Like group warp ammo. Yeah. Or some, like, superior edition mm. of group warp ammo. I went to the wrong one. Went to the wrong one. Just gonna turn around real fast, go back through this door. And this one, too. 
Because that's how sequential rooms work. Yes. The... Gosh, I was just thinking about that. And, like, how you brought up going through the game again to do different stuff. Yeah. I, like... Civilization is the only game I do that with. Because I'm wrapped up in the idea that the experience that I want to get out of a game, I'm probably only going to do it once, maybe twice. And I think that the choices that I make in a game like that mm -hmm. are representative of my characteristics, like, as a, as a person. I know that they are role-playing games because you know, supposedly you play a role. Right. But the fact of offering <laughs> you... <laughs> I'm playing a... Never mind. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get. I got that. Good. Good joke. Good joke. Thanks, nice Mom. Nice joke, honey. Thanks, Mom. Nice joke. Um, but... I have, I have chocolate now. Uh, I have maybe, chocolate pop now. Uh, maybe later, after we get back from the grocery store. Okay, I want freezer pops. Okay, maybe later. Freezer pops. Uh, we'll think about it. I want both, because you always you always put one back in the wrapper, and I want both. Um, we will negotiate this over dinner, after you're full and tired and in bed and <laughs> in your dreams. Okay. <laughs> good. Good. Look. 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 Bubbles. <gasps> there you go. You're Ooh. welcome. Bubbles are better for you than sugar. So, like I was saying, offering somebody a choice in a video game where you can do pretty much anything within the constraints of that game makes those choices more meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. So when I play Mass Effect, I play Mass Effect. Me, I do it. Not I am playing as somebody goofing off in Mass Effect. You know what I mean? Like, I don't create some random persona and go, I'm going to be mean this time. I just try to go with how I would act. And sometimes I am surprised with myself. I think I shot somebody I didn't expect to shoot one of the times, and I was like, oh my god, I just did that. And I was like, serves him right, I guess. I don't know. And I think that that makes the experience more valuable if you treat it like that sometimes. On the other hand, I'll make all kinds of crazy D&D characters. Well, I... That's normally what I do the first time. Mm-hmm. But I find that, specifically with Bioware games, because they usually do such a great job of crafting variation, mm -hmm. that it is usually something that I, I like to go through and appreciate. Oh, so you just want to, like, touch all the different parts that there are just to see how everything works and looks and well, stuff just because, because it's nice. Just because they're there, and <clears throat> oftentimes they're not. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know what? Bioware, uh, they occasionally, they, they cheat, too, because they've got budgets and time constraints. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but... I'm trying to think of a of an example. Someone might ask you a question, and the responses might seem varied. Fallout, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. Fallout 3 would do this pretty often, where they will present multiple answers mm -hmm. to something that a character has an uh, asked you. So like dialogue choices? Yes, but no matter what you say, Mm -hmm. They always respond with the same line. Oh. Or there will be four options, but only one of them actually triggers a different recorded response. Mm -hmm. And I, I usually, almost always, whenever you have branching conversations, just because you have to like draw a line somewhere yeah. and ensure that you're not spending ten gillion dollars on stuff that people are like never gonna see. There's a point where they like join back up, right? Yeah. I, I, I would rather have fake options that make me feel more like I'm playing a character than to have no options at all, right? So Yeah, but Bioware usually does a pretty great job of providing... <sighs> okay, the thing with uh, Samara's daughter. Yeah. That was a pretty big deal. Yeah. And, it, like, 
on the one hand, it's a little bit, it feels like a little bit of a cop-out to have her be like, I'll impersonate my mother so no one gets suspicious. But that's just clever, right? That's just yeah. clever design work. Yeah. Because they they can't, they couldn't just have her, like, all of her conversations just be different through the throughout the rest of the game, right? Mm-hmm. That's asking too much. Yeah, that that is quite a lot. But yeah, I I don't know. Now th- this game that we're playing right now is sort of a different story when it comes to that type of thing. There aren't a lot of like moral judgments you're making here exactly. You just kind of react to the story that's being presented and you inhabit Samus. Like you're wearing her her skin, well her suit. You know. Her skin suit. Her skin suit, yeah. I just think it's funny how different it feels playing games like this versus playing games like Mass Effect. Like, I have a completely different emotional reaction to that. Gah! The whole thing that I wanted to talk about. I don't know if I'd want to be an adept or a vanguard or... Uh Uh-oh. Sentinel? Oh, you said uh uh-oh and I was like, did the game freeze? No. (laughs) No, just my brain. Okay. Just my brain. It's, oh man, it's like one of my favorite classes to play, especially in two and three. Mm-hmm. Less so in, in one, but. Mm. Mm. I don't remember the classes anymore. I just remember like stuff. <gasps> There's a thing in there. Did you see the thing? Yeah, but I need the plasma beam. Oh. Was I to be more? Oh. Uh, Excuse dodge. me? Whoa, Ice Beam doesn't help at all. All right. Wow. Uh, whew. So, Adept is pure space magic. Mm-hmm. Vanguard is multi-class fighter and mage. Mm-hmm. So it splits the difference between raw combat and... Uh... Mm-hmm. Right? Biotics? They were, I think yeah, they were, they were called biotics. And then the one that was like half technician, half space magic. Mm-hmm. I think it was the sentinel, but I have forgotten. Oh. Hey, do you think you could look it up for me and then we can tell everyone tomorrow? Ew. Didn't like that ending. Let's just cut that out. Bail, you better cut that out. No! <laughs>